and I think we're live. We're live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies, the live video podcast where we like to go beyond the review to get into the craft, the story, and the meaning of the films we watch today. Uh, today, we've got a great show for you. Uh, a first for us, we're actually going to do a does it hold up for a movie that's only two days old. And this is in part because we listen to the best chat on the internet, folks who who shouted out, said this is the movie we should be looking at when it comes out. Uh, of course, we're talking about Netflix's uh, A Castle for Christmas, starring Brooke Shields and Carrie Elways. Um, first, I am going to... Uh, uh, but first, I think it's time to bring in our uh, uh, my co-host, my co-host with the most, um, Mr. Jim Chaboyko. How you doing, Jim? Good, good. I'm uh, just figuring out our new. I got to sit up straighter here. <laughs> really, really, how do I? It's, it's like the opposite of Instagram. It's uh, rectangular. Anyway, good. how does this how all doing? work out? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you good? Good. Yeah. Another uh, crazy weekend comes and goes really fast. Uh, I, I worked late on Friday, so I didn't even get the. You know, you didn't even get that sort of appetizer for the. Uh, the weekend but uh yeah made it and uh got a chance to see some people and watch a movie or two and uh you know uh do nothing about christmas yet but uh, that, <laughs> that's coming i'm sure good to hear all right we've got a v- oh uh now folks folks who remember uh when uh i believe it was when we were reviewing venom um venom 2 uh, carnage something like that Boy, that movie really had an impact on me, you can tell. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> the film came up. This is when we first decided this. And, of course, we first decided basically on air. And that was with a very special co uh, a guest co-host, although she's being less. Catherine's less special every time. <laughs> Not to say you aren't truly special, Catherine. Uh, welcome back. You've been back a few times you, you know, it's just not as fancy. It's not as shiny, but you're still gold to us. Anyway, welcome back. You good, Catherine? Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, all right. And then last but certainly not least, we have, as we always do in our Does It Hold Up, our last movie of the month, it's become a bit of a tradition, is uh, we invite our good friend Brian, uh, Dragon Movie Guy, DMG, back to tell us about uh, what he's got on his radar for the next month. And because it's Christmas, you got quite the list, Brian. We do. I have 15, like, Five plus five plus five. I've got fifteen as, uh, movies this month. Holy not, moly! Not, not just my top ten. I've got my top fifteen. Wow. And it, you know, there's there was so much. I, I tried sneaking it into my just as a top ten, but I, I just that's made a, it like a lot. Yeah, it, it is. A, there's a lot coming out this month, and oddly, there's very few things coming out in January. So <laughs> I had to had to you know stretch stretch the list out, make it a top fifteen. Um, you know, just cause end of the year, holidays, Christmas time, people go to the movies a lot more. So might as well make it a top 15 this month. This is what you got. Um, now, uh, that means you've got a group. So let me put up the group picture, uh, for the first five. You're not actually going to go through them, but maybe you give them a quick list. That would be awesome if you wouldn't mind. Uh, yes. and, uh, my, my, my... bad for the messy kind of. The display. It is what it so, is. You'll also. So, for it. anyone, absolutely. Yeah. So, for anyone just joining us, normally I do a top 10. So, I, I usually on the show, I do 10 through 6 of my top 10 uh, as my first five. But since we're doing 15 this month, we've got like a, a list here um, for 11 through 15 that we'll just go over real quick. And then we'll get in and do the uh, 10 through 6 as normal. So, uh, 15 on my list. I, I have um, Swan Song, which is a sci-fi drama starring Mahershala Ali. It's basically along the lines of multiplicity, but a drama. So if you remember the old, the old uh, movie from the 90s, um, 
That one was more of a comedy. This one's more of a drama. Michael but Keaton, the, I think. Yeah, the Michael yeah. Keaton movie from the 90s. The one where they make the copy of the copy and it's not quite as sharp. <laughs> so this one is sort of similar, but it's a drama. It's got Mahershala Ali. Um, but it's sort of a similar concept where the man, you know, makes a copy of himself and he doesn't tell his family. Sounds good. Uh, when's yeah. it coming out? <laughs> Uh, that is coming out in De- December 17th on Apple TV. Okay, number 14. Uh, n- number 14 <laughs> is The King's Man, which is the third Kingsman movie. Um, it, uh, Matthew Vaughn is back to direct it. Uh, this one takes is sort of a prequel. It com- takes place during World War One. The bad guy is Rasputin. Uh, for those who don't know, Rasputin was actually a real-life character um, in the Russian... He the was last a character. <laughs> yeah, and, and seriously, like if you Google Rasputin and look at a picture of him, it's freaky. Like it's yeah. really, really freaky. Like you the bet. look in his eyes. So when's it coming that, out? That's a freaky. Yeah, he, he's, <laughs> sorry, he I'm rushing you along point. here, man. We got to get to yeah. your ten. <laughs> we got to get to yeah, number so, ten still. Uh, yes, uh, very quickly. Number thirteen is Flea, which is a Flea as not as in the bass player, but as in like Flea, like Escape. It's an animated documentary. It's been going through all the award circuits, and. Um, it looks really well done. Uh, I'm not going to say much more about it, but uh, Flea, if you want to learn more, definitely check that out. It looks really interesting. And that's spelled F-L-E-E, as in F-L-E-E. Flea Run Away. Yes. As as, not, to... And not not as in the thing that makes dogs scratch. So You're just uh, Flea, like, like the bass player. Um, yeah. uh, number 12 is A Journal for Jordan. It stars Michael B. Jordan and is directed by Denzel Washington. It's like if you know if you ever see a soldier go into battle and they usually write a letter to their families. That's sort of the concept here. Um, that one looks pretty good. It just looks like a really heartfelt family film. Um, good for the holidays type thing. Uh, my number eleven film is Wolf. It almost made its way to the top ten. Uh, it's a weird one where it's it people. It, it, there, there's this thing called species dys- dysphoria where people think they're a dog or a cat <laughs> and they kind of go off to an institution and kind As of As one does. Out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it reminds me a lot if, uh, if you've ever like watched indie films, uh, there's a 2015 movie called the lobster with Colin Farrell and Rachel Weisz. It's not a sequel. They're not related, but it looks a lot like that type film. It's British type film. So that it looks really good. It looks really well done. So that's number 11 on my list. All righty. So now we're getting into, uh, uh, now we're getting into, uh, the others just a sec here. Let me, uh, let me bring that one up for you. Okay. Number 10, where the meat of the, uh, the meat of the list is starting. Yeah. Number 10 I have is the lost daughter, which is a psychological drama. It's, uh, it stars Olivia Coleman, the British actress, and it's the directorial debut for Maggie Gyllenhaal. And the concept is this older woman uh, is on vacation by herself, and she's sort of chilling, and then she sees a bunch of families start showing up on the beach that she's at, and she kind of starts freaking out a little bit, acting a little weird. And the moms of the little kids who were there see this older woman kind of freaking out, and they kind of like her seeing a lot of red flags go up and they, you know, they talk to her, they find out some things, but it's just, it's, it's a little bit of a psychological thriller. A lot of red flags go up and it is interesting too, because she kind of gives off this creepy vibe and it is really interesting because Maggie Gyllenhaal's real life husband is Peter Sarsgaard, who is like the creepiest act. He's the expert at creepy. If Sam Elliott's the expert of Westerns, Peter Sarsgaard is definitely the expert at being creepy on camera. Peter Sarsgaard is in this film, but he doesn't show up in the trailers at all. So it looks like a pretty creepy without being over the top, but still being not quite a horror film, but just still a thriller. It looks really interesting. So that's number 10 on my list. When's it coming out, my friend? That is coming out December 17th, and it hits Netflix on December 31st. Cool. So they're doing one of those limited release deals? or they're, Yeah, that's that. a lot of, you know, it's, it's award season. We're starting to get into Oscar hopefuls type season. And in order to qualify for next year's Oscars, they try and shove them, in, shove them into December, at least in limited release. So when they go wide in January, it's a lot 
it, the movies are a lot fresher in people's minds. So you see a lot of this in my December list where, where it's released in early December and then goes straight to streaming or straight to theaters in January. So kind of all over the place. But. Cool. Yes. Right. So, uh, it, so in at number nine is the tender bar or the bartender, uh, which is directed by George Clooney and starring Ben Affleck. And it's a coming of age drama about a little kid named Jr. And he is played by Daniel Ranieri, R-A-N-I-E-R-A, Ranieri, Ranieri. Uh, he plays this kid named Jr. growing up in the 70s and 80s. And he really doesn't have much of a male role model. So that becomes his mom's brother, Ben Affleck, who's a bartender. And he gives him sage words of advice. So it kind of got that period piece going from the 70s and 80s. You got the whole Long Island thing, the the Long Island accent um, for all the characters in the film. And then uh, they kind of jump forward a few years and you have Ty Sheridan, who was Cyclops in the X-Men movies. Um, he's sort of the grown up version of JR and he goes off to it. So it's sort of a coming of age thing uh, type film. You know, it's George Clooney, it's Ben Affleck, and it's got Ty Sheridan. And it, it just looks like a really heartfelt holiday film um, that talks about the importance of extended families and, of course, about uh, male role models as well. Coolio. All right. So and, number, number. oh, sorry. And that one comes out December 17th in limited release, and it comes out on Amazon Prime January 7th. Very cool. Right around when we should be able to see uh, Licorice Pizza, another 70s kind exactly. of reference film. All right. Yeah, that one That one just came out in theater, limited release Dece uh, Friday, but it's not even playing here in Vegas. And usually those types of films play here, but it's it's, it's not playing anywhere here. So Super that one, limited. Licorice Pizza, if I remember, comes out in theaters December 25th. Yep. I think, um, off the top of my head, but... In at number eight, I have Don't Look Up, which is Adam McKay's latest film. He wrote and directed it. And this one has like pretty much all the biggest stars in Hollywood. You got Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, Kate Blanchett, Timothy Chalamet, and Jonah Hill, amongst a ton of other people. Um, it's it's a comedy. It's, it's really more of a dark comedy, and it's about a comet. Uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence play... Uh, scientists, they, so they, they're, they're out stargazing and they see a comet headed towards Earth. <laughs> and it's supposed to end all life on Earth, but of course there's a government conspiracy, there's a cover-up, there's all that kind of stuff. So they have to go on a talk show circuit to try and get the word out that the world is going to end. And it, it's it's unlike anything else, any other role I've really ever seen uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and he's sort We're of having like some a, technical difficulties. Continue, continue, Brian. Okay, uh, so Leonardo DiCaprio, this looks to be his first purely comedic role since he left Growing Pains, the sitcom Growing Pains, 29 years ago. So, it, you know, he's, he's got this kind of the, the glasses, the, 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 uh, the jacket with the holes on the elbows and the patches on the elbows kind of blocking all that up. And it's weird because it only has a $75 million budget, but it has a big a big screen, big budget kind of look to it. Um, so overall, you know, you got Adam McKay, who's won an Oscar now and huge cast, dark comedy, the world ending. <laughs> it comes out on, it 17th, comes out in I limited believe. release. Yeah, it comes oh, on, uh, no, it comes out limited release December 10th and streaming on Netflix December 24th. It's right there on I the poster and I didn't catch the play. <laughs> well, some of these though, they've been uh they've been updating them, so that could be wrong. That was as of a couple of days ago when I wrote my video. So Sounds it could good. have changed. All right. Uh, so what number are we on now, my friend? We are on number 7. Uh and my yes. number 7 film for December is <laughs> yeah, It's it comes on uh, no, it's December 10th. I'm hearing myself a little bit. Uh, uh, in at number seven is Being the Ricardos, which is writer-director Aaron Sorkin's biopic for Lucy Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. It looks at the behind the scenes of Desi and Lucy's marriage and of the making of I Love Lucy. Uh, you know, I'm someone that I grew up a lot in the 80s and 90s, and they still had reruns back then, which reruns don't really exist too much anymore, but... 
even in the 80s and 90s, you could still watch I Love Lucy and see, you know, one of the greatest sitcoms of all time and see how brilliant Lucille Ball was in business and in as a performer in front of the camera and in business behind the camera. Uh, Nicole Kidman is playing Lucille Ball. Javier Bardem is playing Desi Arnaz, and this kind of covers. It, it has that Aaron Sorkin feel to it. The cinematography looks great, and it has that behind the scenes, you know, stress of the marriage, stress of producing the TV show, a little bit of sexism directed towards Lucille Ball, all that kind of combined drama. A little and, bit. Yeah, a l- little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Lucille Ball was just such an amazing. I mean, she created the three camera sitcom. So, um, it just looks amazing. Uh, it's scheduled for a limited theatrical release December 10th and hits Amazon uh, streaming on December 21st. Or sorry, yeah, Amazon Prime Video, December 21st. Number six. And my final one here, number six, I have The Matrix Resurrections, which is the fourth Matrix film. It is the first one since 2003. Um, Neil Patrick Harris, Christina Ricci, Priyanka Dropa Jonas, uh, are at, joining the cast, and Jada Pinkett Smith, Carrie Ann Moss, and Keanu Reeves are coming back from the old cast. Interesting here, and I, I want to say his name right. Yahya Abdul Mateen II joins the, this Matrix sequel as Morpheus. So the old Morpheus is not coming back. We've got a new Morpheus. Things are kind of, the, the effects, if you watch the trailer, it's a little bit up in the air. Uh, the effects look really good, but they're. They're they're going to Keanu Reeves as Thomas Anderson again, and he's he kind of is aware, kind of isn't aware of what what his past was, but uh, he he definitely looks more like John Wick than Neo <laughs> this time around. But overall, it looks really good. I love the idea of adding Neil Patrick Harris to a Matrix film. Something about that just <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris and PH and and the Matrix uh, not trilogy quadrilogy this time. Um, that comes out on December 22nd in theaters and on HBO Max. Very cool, my friend. Um, of them all. Oh, an interesting fact, too. Lana, Lana Wachowski is the solo director on this film. Her sister, Lily, um, did not come back from Matrix 4. So... The Wachowskis produced, the, mm-hmm. wrote, and directed the first three together, and Lana Wachowski herself is is doing the fourth film. So no Lee Wachowski. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks for Brian. Thanks very much. What um, what do you? What's already? Give us a teaser on what you. Uh, not what's on the top five, but what you're looking forward to in the new year. I know you always have kind of a longer view of this stuff. What's uh. Um, I, uh, new year, uh, I keep doing more of the same. I've got, I've started doing a lot of first credits videos. So I'm, I'm looking at a lot of, um, a lot of where, you know, if you look at Leonardo DiCaprio, for example, he's, you know, one of the biggest stars in Hollywood, if not the biggest star in Hollywood over the last 20 years, but you sit there and think, okay, well, at one point he was just a dude. He's just an actor. He was he wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio. He was just a guy. He was just a person. Um, and at some point, he was just struggling to. That's my uh, favorite. Struggling just a dude. Yeah, yeah. It's just just a dude struggling to break into the Doing business like anyone else. Yeah, you know. So um, I, I've started a series of videos. I've, I'm four or five into it now, and I've got another one coming out. I've got one coming out for Don't Look Back, and I've got one coming out for Spider Man No Way Home. Uh, where I look at all of these huge Hollywood stars and where they got their first roles, their first, whether it's their first TV role, their first movie role, their first commercial in some cases. I've scoured the internet. I've found as many as I can. And I'm showing you where Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, for the Don't Look Back one, got his first credit. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm putting, that's where most of my time is going in now in terms of uh, video production. Is, is just going in and showing where these celebrities started off their careers, how they got their big break, uh, and then, you know, how that leads to where they are now. Um, so that's that's sort of what I'm really looking to do more of going into the new year. Very January, cool. So. Very cool, my friend. Well, uh, listen, Brian, thank you once again for coming. Apologies for rushing you through. 
it's all my bad for starting late as it is. Um, what, what can I say? You, you, you keep coming back. It's your own fucking, uh, let's blame the victim here. It's your own goddamn fault for coming well, back. Thank you for having me. And even, even if there is a certain law of diminishing returns of me coming back this many times, I, I still, I still, I still love coming back as long as you'll have me. So. You know what, Brian? It's always great having you on the show. It, it uh, and uh, you know what? Eventually, once they work out, look, we finally have the chat on screen. Um, <laughs> once I finally work out all the kinks in the new model, uh, it'll be a lot slicker. And maybe next time we'll actually mention you the week before, because uh, I do think it is a highlight. And yeah, you mention a lot of movies. I was like, oh, well, that looks kind of neat. So. Thanks very much. Uh, Jim, uh, yeah. Catherine, did you guys have any questions for Brian before I kick him off and we readjust everything and we get to our, uh, get to our movie this week? Well, I, I was just going to say, uh, that, uh, I hope he has lots to watch in, uh, uh, Brian has lots to watch in January cause he probably won't be watching the playoffs. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm a Seahawks <laughs> fan too. So I, <laughs> this is, I this is how you show your love. Oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, the, the Seahawks are currently sitting in last place. They're uh, they're in the basement. Um, I my hope is that the basement will keep them warmer for this this one year that we're going to miss the playoffs. <laughs> um, I, I also hope it's not Russell Wilson's last year in Seattle because there's a lot of rumors and speculation about him wanting to be traded specifically to the Las Vegas Raiders. So. Um, yeah, my, my hope is, fingers crossed, we come back next year healthy, happy, and uh, Pete Carroll won't be walking out of press conferences anymore. My hope. Do, so. do a one-for-one one Derek Carr for Wilson. Uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. <laughs> no. He gets yardage, at least. But uh, anyway. Anyway, no, let's talk. I, 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 just, okay. I think Derek Carr looks too much like the dude who was on Arrow for me. Okay, uh, love Stephen Amell, but I don't want Stephen Amell as my quarterback. So, how are you doing, nice, Catherine? Nice uh, showbiz uh, reference. Apparently, we've become a football channel. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know because uh, that's what the audience who watched A Castle for Christmas is really interested in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> exactly. Well, it's been such that. an overlap in markets. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Zing. The, ring, all demographics. the Venn yeah. diagram of interest. <laughs> all right. Well, on that entertaining note, Brian, again, thank you very much. Um uh you know what? You're more than welcome. Listen, you're more than welcome to stay. We just got to hustle you off the stage. <laughs> the the giant hook. You, and... you get the hook. <laughs> <laughs> but please exit by the bar. <laughs> well, thank All you for having me and uh my my top tip uh i'm gonna the the video is not quite out yet i'm just putting the finishing touches on it but it will come out Ooh, tuesday yes. morning on my on my channel Dragon and i did guys. put uh recent folks you can see in the chat uh that i did put brian's uh link to his channel in the chat and we'll throw that up in a i, I swear to god i'll actually get my crap together and it will be in a pin link <laughs> this time all right Okay, thanks very much. Uh, uh, hey, Brian. Thank you again, Brian. Uh, thanks. I'm trying not to hit. Happy the mic. belated, uh, happy belated Thanksgiving. That oh, is yeah, correct. Day, yes, Thanksgiving. Uh, folks. Yeah, it it was uh, American Thanksgiving, uh, uh, a celebration of Thanksgiving for settlers and maybe not so much for uh, indigenous uh, <laughs> indigenous peoples. <laughs> I, I just woke up out of my turkey coma the other day, so. All right. Okay, man. Okay. Have a, again, have a great evening and, uh, yeah, f uh, feel free to stick around in the chat, but if you got other things to do, we understand. Uh, uh, all right, man. Ciao for now. See you. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> That's the way that just automatically cuts them off. Eh? It's like, eh, okay, you're done. <laughs> bye bye Uh, all right, folks. Um, Bear with me. Uh, I'm sure as uh, DMG exits out of Skype, there'll be, I'll have to do some readjustments. But we are here to talk about, uh, to talk about this movie, A Castle for Christmas. <laughs> and why don't I, you know what, I'll jump over here for a second. 
uh, and give everyone uh, here's here are the basics. Uh, I know I mentioned this already before. Um, uh, where am I here? Uh, sorry, guys, just want to. Uh... Oh, yes. Right. A Castle for Christmas starring Brooke Shields and Carrie Elways. Uh, here's the log line. Uh, famed off- author Sophie Brown, played by Ms. Shields. Uh, travels to Scotland hoping to buy a small castle of her own. It's all anybody wants, just a castle of her own. Um, but the prickly owner, Duke Miles, played by Carrie Elways, is reluctant to sell to a ferner. Uh, working to find a compromise, the pair constantly butt heads, but they just may find something more than they were expecting. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So on that note, uh, let's get into the, uh, social, um, uh, let me give you the, uh, social ingredients and it's going to be a bit of a bit of a, you know, it, it does happen. Okay. Uh, sorry folks. This is going to be a, all right. Here's a, let's talk about the social nutrition checklist um, for this for this flick. Uh, and I'm just going to go through it uh, directly, uh, of course, uh, on the reframe stamp. That's a yes. It did. Uh, it achieved. Uh, it, it, it got a reframe stamp. And uh, it's not just me figuring it did. It was written by women, uh, directed by a woman. Uh, lead star Brooke Shields. She had top billing. Um, uh, so yeah, it it flew right there. Uh, it got what it needed to uh, to to be a reframe stamp. Uh, uh, so qualified for that. Uh, it was a union made film. Uh, it I believe it passed the Bechdel test. Um, uh, although folks, uh, may, may disagree with me on this. I, I think it did. Uh, the only thing is as well. Yeah. One rich person buys a castle off a hereditary noble. Uh, yeah, this is not a class conscious film really actually retrograde. It's a, <laughs> it's the opposite of that. Uh, so that gives us, bear with me. Let me pull this up for y'all. Whoops. Not that. Definitely not that. Do, 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 do. That's what I was looking for. I should come up with a melody for this. All righty. Again, I love you all, and I appreciate your your patience. Your wonderful per- 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 your wonderful patience. Okay, all right. So as you can see on the screen there, what's that? <laughs> A seventy five percent, which is pretty good. So uh, with that out of the way, let's uh, let's bring uh, let's bring our folks back. Um, let's uh, adjust everyone a little. We can do that quickly, uh, including <laughs> bringing, oh, both Catherine and Jim, I think, have been cropped a little. So let's, uh, okay, first of all, oh, no, Catherine, actually, look, uh, yeah, l- apparently it's sticking with you right there. Jim, on the other hand, it looks a little weird. We can uh, we can fix that. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. No, you don't need to move anything. Well, unless you want to. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's the, there are the three of us. Let's make, uh, let's make Catherine and I, Catherine and I can be a little bigger, I think now. There we go. All right, I think it'll be a little easier for everyone to uh, to see us now, eh? I don't know, I kind of like that. Let's uh, let's put me there. All right, be like that. Okay, we're back to <laughs> live te- <laughs> the nature of live television. As I'm figuring out this new software, listen, 
saving me 50 bucks a month. <laughs> this, is, this is what's important here. That's all. <laughs> oh, and I had you muted there for a bit, and I continued to have you muted. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, now, before we get into the movie and our quick review, et cetera, we've done the uh, social nutrition checklist. Uh, but let's take a quick, uh, just a quick side into uh, the chat and just just to welcome everyone. Uh, we have got, where are we? There we are. Oh, my goodness. We've got so many people in here. Uh, first of all, well, Katie Fowler. <laughs> Who, who says it should get a minus one for class consciousness? <laughs> I think I'm with her here. Um, all right. Uh, Matthew David Bowren, our man in, is he in Adelaide or Perth? Perth. Perth. <laughs> Good to see You're you, man. You're going to anger him. DMG, back again. Uh, he's in the chat. Good to see you, man. Good to see you again. Uh, Richard L., uh, do you get a class consciousness check just by having a castle? <laughs> like, what is the moat for? <laughs> uh, okay, so Richard L. is here. Good to see you, man. And uh, yeah, I think that's, that's uh, although we got more viewers, that's who we've got in the chat right now. Uh, good to see you all. Welcome. And any of you lurkers, welcome as well. Feel free to chime in in the chat. But if you just want to kind of hang out, listen in, that's cool too. All right. Uh, now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to the movie and let's talk about the quick review. Um, what, uh, Catherine, why don't you kick us off? Tell us what you think of this uh what, give us your yeah your first your first spoiler free quick review. Um, very disappointing, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> 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 I just it, there was no it didn't have to be so bad it really didn't right like are you sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Listen, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, I've seen enough Aurora Tea Garden mysteries, and uh, yeah, and murder and murder she baked to know that it can be done in like a nice way that uh, that keeps your attention and that's not ridiculous, right? Or not like not like completely ridiculous. Not to say that murder she baked is not ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, no, it was. Uh, My experience very... actually with Love Heart was like, this is not awful. This actually has some charm. It is same, same idea. Well, not the exact same yeah. pitch, but, you know, your Christmas romance. They find love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Catherine. Uh Although I got to admit, it's like disappointing. Were you really disappointed? <laughs> were you expecting more? But apparently you were. I was. No, I actually was expecting more. I actually was expecting more. Okay. Based on the cast. Ah, well, reasonable. That that makes sense, actually. Perhaps I was dreaming. I was in my own weird Hallmark world. So, <laughs> as, you know, no one to blame but myself. As as one can 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 find themselves in. I, Absolutely. I, who, am, who are we to judge? No. One. <laughs> All right. A again, a, a man who not a week ago was praising Love Hard. <laughs> Wasn't that what it was called? Love Hard? The Christmas think, BS? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds a little more uh, uh, adult uh, when you say it now, but I think it was Love, <laughs> love Hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Jim, what about you? What uh, What was your... Give us your uh, give us your take, your initial take on well, this. Well, in terms of Scottish movies, this made me want to watch Train Spotting again <laughs> several <laughs> times. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, a little kidding, but uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it it you know what I thought was that uh, Netflix is trying to head uh, Hallmark off at the pass and uh, almost you know and. Catherine's right about the cast is that, you know, Carrie Elways and Brooke Shields uh, are not slouches. So I, I suspect th this could have 
probably have been done a little cheaper as a Hallmark movie with a couple soap opera actors or, or what have you, not to denigrate them, but, but, you know, yeah, as, as you brought up uh, uh, the, the talent there, uh, Carrie Ellis has a pretty extensive resume, but he's also done a lot of Saw movies. So I don't know. He just seems to be doing something from like every genre he can. Um, but they, I mean, yeah, it was uh, pretty light. Uh, the stakes were pretty low and um, uh, it seemed to be missing a middle because they had uh, well, there was a was montage. Missing a lot point. of things. <laughs> yeah. And there was a montage at some point, And I thought, this, you didn't earn this montage, you know. But anyways, um, yeah. Another thing that's wrong is you don't plant trees in winter, as far as I know. And after that point, I just stopped taking notes. Uh, but uh, I'm know, amazed you took notes up to that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I like the dog. The dog was cute. And uh you know the horses were neat. I like animals, so. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was this was really light, and and you can do light, low stakes stuff. I mean, television's filled with light, low stakes uh, romances, uh, that sort of thing. Things like the New Girl, and uh, and uh, I was The Office, maybe you know, where it's just a day to day thing. But uh, you know, this this one, I don't know. It, it just it was missing a, a few things, including a middle. But anyway, how did, what did you think, Rob? Uh, you know what? I'm going to say the one good thing I can say about this movie, because as soon as the dog, the, the meat cute happens early, early in the movie because of Hamish, the dog, that's the point I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. This is going to be <laughs> bad. I will force myself to watch it, but it's going to be bad. Booze? But I can say one good thing. This is the only good thing I can say about what is really an awful film. There's something to be said for two, uh, to, to have two leads in their late late fifties, early sixties, yeah. being you know falling in love, being sexual beings. Like you know, it's like okay, well, look at that. There's love for rich. White people, <laughs> rich, older white people. But that is the one positive I could draw. It was near the end. It was like kind of, you know, there's something to be said for this. So you got two romantic leads that are well, in, and they don't, I mean, I think they both, I, I suspect both, both people, both actors have had work done. It, they're, they're actors in L.A., uh, even if Carrie always, I don't think he lives there anymore. So, and, and I, I, I don't want to judge that. That said, I, to get to my point on this is they weren't hiding their age. Like the makeup yeah. wasn't over the top. They weren't doing a lot of like, uh, like no more work than the actors may have already brought to the table. Like, I mean, they weren't, uh, they were dressing appropriately. Like, I mean, it just, it felt that that was the one part that I can say was good, but otherwise, yeah, I checked out of this movie early. It's uh, uh, the, at times it's, it's a weird one, right? Uh, and we'll get more of it into this. There are like real weird story issues where I'm like, why uh, the, the montage, you know, uh, even the reason they, disconnect because all of these romance movies have a moment where it's like you know it's oh they meet will they won't they oh they are um. oh they break up oh they get back together that's that's every romance movie and it, as you were saying they're like no stakes at any time even the reasons are like kind of okay yeah <laughs> you know and the i i gotta admit if i was scottish watching this i'd be like well Here's a long list of, uh, you know, I'd say maybe offensive is too strong because it's just so <laughs> lightweight. You know, it's like, I, I don't know if I was Scottish, I'd take offense. I'd be like, I'd just be like, wow, my eyes are rolling a lot here. Like, um, yeah, it, it's not a good movie. And the, the meat of it is, yeah, other than landing two, like, real actors, real stars who seem to actually be doing their best in the film, that's about all they did. Um, and so now that we've watched it, the one, uh, another positive I can draw from this is now I can give, give shit 
to the woman on Twitter saying, you have to watch it because Mary Lambert directed it. Now I can say, you know what? I don't think Mary Lambert gave a crap about this movie. <laughs> anyway, there, there's my, there's my, there's my shtick. Yes. I was waiting for you to bring up the offending tweet. <laughs> that started all the all of this ridiculous <laughs> rest assured we'll be holding that individual responsible for everything Uh-oh. afterwards well, right to the Twitter. end <laughs> um you know what can i say though that this ah you know what i think that's i think that's about it uh guys is it time to uh is Spoiler. it time the spoiler zone. There we go. Still got the effect. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's get into it. The craft. Um, Jim, <laughs> why don't you start us off? <laughs> you know, some of the, a lot of the, um, the shots, the external shots and a lot of the, I guess it's drone footage. Uh, you'd probably know better than I. It, it starts off showing pictures of New York because this is where it's all starting. Uh, but even shots of the castle and stuff. I thought I thought it looked, you know, the it, it, image quality was great. Uh, it sort of set the scene and, <laughs> and that sort of thing. So it, it, it at least looked technically uh, good. The Competent. snow didn't look... That, yeah, and, and as somebody, you know, at, well, all three of us are from a a cold weather nation and my ongoing anger towards Hollywood and their depiction of cold. You couldn't see anybody's breath at any time, but the snow at least didn't look too fake. I mean, it might've been fake, might've been real. I don't know, but uh, it, it, it looked okay. It, it, you know, the, the, the other aspects, the acting, the writing, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that sort of thing. Like I said, there's just, it's hard for me to put a, a finger on it. Uh, was definitely missing something the leads you know are charismatic um uh a lot of a lot of kind of smirking and uh you know i just about saw you naked you know that kind of level of of sort of you know romantic banter you know as as we as we see in these kinds of movies but uh you know it wasn't you said it's good roles for um older actors and they didn't call the attention to it that was i think that's a good point um also, you know, it's light. It's, you know, it's, it's something you could watch with, you know, family, perhaps. Um, there's no death. None of, the, none of the plot devices, I think, are predicated on death, which is virtually every movie, 99% of movies, you know, part of the driver is somebody dying or getting killed or trying not to be killed or something like that. Also, no violence. So, well, aside from the snowball fight and other <laughs> things. But, you know, it, it so there's a... I mean, it was G-rated as well. So I think I don't think we've done a G-rated movie uh, on our uh, uh, show, have we? I'm trying to think if any. Yeah, but um, but That's a good uh, question. yeah, in terms, yeah, uh, but in terms of craft, I mean, you know, it looked okay. Um, I just, yeah, I just wish it had sort of gotten a, a little bit deeper. Uh, we'll, we'll talk. I'll talk about some yeah. of the issues and story story that I'm sort of interested in. But um, uh, in- including Carrie always not being nearly mean enough to be able to earn that that turn of his. But uh, uh, yeah, the castle is cool, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> How about I'll pass it over to Catherine? Catherine I guess. Yeah, yeah, Catherine. Yeah. What about uh, performances? What did you think? Oh, to me. Yeah. Oh, I thought. I mean, I agreed with Jim. And then the I rest. Thought it looked good. I thought it looked good. Um, and that was good. Carrie Elwes, his his accent kind of bugged me. Like, so when he started, I was like, his accent is good, but I he's not Scottish. There was just something about it. I think it was the cadence of it. Like the the rolling of the R's was was perfect, but I think just the cadence. I'm I'm like, you're not Scottish. And uh, you know, apart from that, I think they did they did well. I, it was yeah. I I think it was it was really the it was really the writing was terrible. So well, then why? What what did you guys think? Like I, I I'm gonna come back to performances again. I would say that everyone seemed, you know, they knew what they were making. 
Um, this is the kind of thing where the stars are literally, there's not a lot of rehearsal time. They show up on set. It's like, okay, uh, yeah, let's do this. Um, but I, I didn't think like even the supporting cast, no standouts, no, no wow, but everyone seemed competent, but I think that's almost what you could say about all the craft, except for one item. I'll, uh, it was all competent. I, I, I don't even think, I, I can't even say it was good. Of course they had real money. They had a real camera. It was shot professionally. Nothing too creative. Nothing, you know, it's not big tracking shots or anything interesting. It's like, ah, establishing shot. Yeah, let's send up a drone. Okay, there we go. Look, countryside. Okay, <laughs> we'll master it. <laughs> over the shoulder, over the shoulder. <laughs> Two shot. <laughs> All right, we're done. Moving on. <laughs> Ms. Lambert, for some reason, I imagine this is a woman. Uh, she did, for those of you who don't know, Mary Lambert, uh, she actually directed the original Pet Cemetery back in the 80s. Been around for years. I, for some reason, I imagine her smoking. All right, let's, uh, we're moving on. Another, let's, let's just, are we good? We're good, we're good. <laughs> Lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody go to craft service and get me a coffee. Um, <laughs> but um, I hope Ms. Lambert is not smoking. Uh, but I just, I, I do. <laughs> the part of me she flies in. It's like, is my check cleared? All right. Yeah, I'll direct this nonsense. Oh my God. Okay, sure. It's a bay check. <laughs> Um, the costumes, I, I mean, and I know I was going to have a hard time with this, the over abundance of tweed and, oh. um, and tartan, you know, just everywhere. And it's like, it's, it, I, I find it now here's where I get offended on behalf of all of Scotland. It's like for no one's dressing like that. Look at the poster. They look ridiculous. They look like well, they look like caricatures, you know? <laughs> it's like and and they just they went all out. You can tell this is a mar you know, the the market <laughs> for this is I want to believe in something that doesn't exist in any way, you know? Like it's just it's 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 all kind of gross and icky. Uh, and yeah, I was like, you know, could you at least dial down the tartan a little? No, they didn't. They, they, of all things that they could say, screw it, we're going to really press the button on. They decided they'll press the button on tartan. They'll mash that tartan button down. And I was like, come on. Oh God, I hate the tartan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So that's, that'd be all I have to say on uh, craft myself. Anybody want to add anything? I'm going uh, to I was just uh, going to say, I, at, I, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the, the movie poster here and uh, I'm wondering, I guess they're not the same tartan that uh, Carrie Elways and, and uh, Brooke are wearing there. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of costume changes in this. I sort of I th I wonder if it was partially sponsored by like the Scottish wool lobby or something because they're they're all knitting they gift each other clothes uh, there's there's about nine costume changes per character uh, and, uh, and it, yeah you're right about that you know you can make this movie but sixty percent of this is going to the costume uh, yeah but uh, yeah you got a good point there it's sort of it is it, it's. I mean, it's glorious for someone who loves that kind of thing. Uh, I'm sure in costume Twitter, this has been a very good weekend for those folks. But uh, uh, yeah. I'm looking at uh, the yeah, chat here, good. guys. And uh, well, first of all, uh, the Brockham side. Cody. Yes. Good to see you here, man. And Jelly Duck 100, our man in Kuwait City. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> good to wow. see you. Uh, but not uh, even Christmas. <laughs> it's not even. <laughs> Maybe this is it, it, what's what we're really missing here is the true spirit of this movie, bringing us all together to, you know, perhaps <laughs> crap on it. Uh, folks, I, I've got a uh, uh, the chat's having a good time. Um, uh, chat's having a really good time. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, I, it, yeah it, with Cody uh, sir, that reminds me, I got to get a new Christmas tree. <laughs> um, uh, it, Richard L says it's like when they shot an '80s movie, and every tiny detail is bubblegum pink and synthesizer. Um, it certainly has, and I. <laughs> I want to watch that now. (laughs) It certainly has, guys. I think um, a certain, uh, well, but all these do, a movie of the week vibe. You know, you could see uh, any of the big networks making this in the 80s or even into the 90s before things got a little grittier. Um, But I want to come back to your comment, your comment, Jim, Uh, you know, Hallmark trying to head something or they're trying to head Hallmark off of the past. And all I can think is Hallmark's long gone. Like, I mean, this is <laughs> them and lifetime are the, it's almost like these guys are chasing it. Um, yeah. And I suppose when you've got to, like, I mean, those folks are going to put out a movie a day, Christmas for two months. Um, oh, yeah. You almost, you're, you, you cannot, not all of them are going to be a love hard, which we'll defend to the grave. <laughs> Nina um, Dobrev, Rob has your back. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's what she's thinking. Well, mind you, we are growing 181 subscribers this evening. That's because of you, yes. the best chat on the internet. Let's yes, make sure uh, so, the best chat on on the internet. Um, Catherine, did you have anything you wanted to add as far as craft goes? Like, I, you know, not a lot of meat on these bones, but maybe there's yeah, something. Yeah, no, missing. no, no. I don't know if this goes under craft, but I was sort of, I was like, are there even dukes? Are there even dukes in Scotland? Like the Duke of Edinburgh is a member of the royal family. And then there's another, there's another duke that's also like, an English royal, right? Mm-hmm. And so, anyway, so I said to my partner, I was like, uh, I was like, are there actually like, are there dukes in Scotland? That doesn't sound right to me. I think they'd be he all says, earls. Yeah, I think so. And he's like, I don't think historical accuracy for the British market was on the <laughs> minds of the <laughs> creators of of this flick. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think. Well, so. back to the tartan, right? You know, it's like, I, I suspect any Scottish person is like. Uh, okay, so let's get into the story and okay. then I can talk. And then, but you, you know, like. You the, yes, yes, I understand. You're, you have just in terms of the tartan and yeah. Scottish stuff and what could have happened here. You bet. Start us off. We're on, we're we're talking about Intriguing. star. We're talking about star story. St- st- okay. Story. While the chat talks about uh, Netflix, Christmas, and capitalism, <laughs> let's get into the story. I, we are paying attention to you folks. I swear to God. <laughs> anyway, Catherine, <laughs> go. Okay. So the story, right? So as you as you said before, um, normally you have these you have a romance these, these romantic issues and so you have two people that should be together and there's a reason why they can't be together and it's either like Romeo and Juliet is classic West Side Story if you want to take that but even even like um as you like it or or any of those any like classic romance there's some reason that they can't be together and then they have to overcome that in over in order to get together. Yeah. <laughs> so in this movie, the reason they couldn't be together is because he's an asshole. And it's like, that's not a good enough reason for them to not be together. Like this is this is ridiculous. And it's Scotland, right? So my aunt, it made me so I was thinking, you know, could they not do something with that? So my aunt, especially when like she finds, he finds out that she's a McGinty. So then you think, oh, this is going to be something. No, it's absolutely nothing. So yeah, because you have like an upstairs ago, downstairs story, thing, possibly. I know, right? <laughs> anyway, so it made me think of this. My aunt, her family's a, a strike, and here's the writer going. <laughs> 
Nah, that's not a good enough pitch. So your aunt, sorry, Catherine. She, her family's Scottish. She gets, she travels to Scotland. She's on a bus. I don't know if she's in Edinburgh or whatever. Wherever she was, she's talking to the bus driver and uh, tells, tells him her name. And she says, oh, but actually my family is, my family is Scottish. And he says, and, uh, says my last name is uh, Johansson now, but my maiden name is Campbell. And you're like, ah, get off me, bus. Really? <laughs> and she was a Campbell. Get the hell out of here. Like, yeah, so it's not like they couldn't have had, it's not like they couldn't have overcome, you know, like clan hatred, right? <laughs> well, even guys, like, you know, there's that key, there is a plot point, should have been a key plot point, like late in the second act, but it comes out not in the first act, but early in the second. Um, Where we find out, carry out the Duke, what he's really trying to do is save the town because he is the paternalist protector of all these people. Yeah. He he is their landlord, but of course there's a ton of debt. And if he sells it, they'll all get wiped out, you know, because of, you know, capitalism. So it's like, no, we, we need to go back to a better time where the feudal lord of the manor or the mercantilist manor lord would, was a protector of all his, you know, holders, t- tenants. Uh, but we don't find that. We find that out too early. And all I could think of is another missed opportunity. Play them as a bigger prick. And as they get to know each other gently, and I'm thinking, uh, oh, uh, Pride and Prejudice, you know? where yes, what, exactly. When do you find out, you, you start with him, and I think, Catherine, you said it, but maybe, or maybe both of you guys said it, how he just wasn't enough of a prick uh, mm. to really kind of earn. Yeah. You, you said, Jim, he didn't really earn his, his turn. Um, but you yeah. know what? We should have found out late in the second act or mi- at least second half of the movie that it's like, Oh, he's got a reason. He's not willing the, why he's willing to give up the castle, but not the, not the, like that should have been something where we get a couple of early, early hints drop it until later where she's kind of going, Oh, I've misjudged this man who I yeah. thought was, you know, just some, you know, Royal, you know, noble asshole. Um, or some trauma, right? Like, yeah. As Jim mentioned, you got to have someone who died. And so he is, his first wife had a tragic death. And so he doesn't think he can ever love again. <laughs> you know? yeah, sure. Why not? Wait, keep running that Catherine. I think you're onto something. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think I'm just, because it, it made me think of, you know, there's of this trope of these American women that go over to Britain. And so you've got Notting Hill, you've got yeah. the holiday, um, you've Ugh. got yeah. uh, so love actually, uh, um, which I'm not sure were there Americans in that? I don't remember. Uh, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, Richards is in that it was a had its own like ridiculous problematic yeah. bullshit. And oh. then, um, yeah, it's just, but Notting Hill, I think that, I thought that was a good flick. I enjoyed mm-hmm. myself and I was like, why was that? And it's, why was that good? And this one was so terrible. Right. And yeah. so it's just sort of, you know, the, yeah, the stakes were so low. Um, the reasons that they did anything mostly didn't really make sense. Even the, and, uh, the trigger, yeah. the, the whole, the inciting incident, she has a meltdown on, you know, insert plug for Drew Barrymore's show. Um, yeah. never felt real. It didn't, uh, you know, it was one of those, it's like, really, you can't, pitch your way out of this jam <laughs> it's like <laughs> totally un- completely unbelievable completely unbelievable you know. yeah and yeah. never mind that uh, unless maybe drew barrymore was like no i want to be like ellen when she gets all cringy <laughs> you know? like, but you know you don't see a host doing that said no yeah. i want to like it's not maury povich or remember sally jesse Raphael. Oh that's, yeah. That's that's yeah. the Good that's one. a name, right? That was like a thing. 
yeah. 30 years yep, ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm showing my age. But yeah, they didn't even cut, you know, and I guess maybe they had a different, I'm not sure how they would have shot the Drew Barrymore show, but Drew Barrymore wasn't even very good at doing Drew Barrymore in this. Like it just, it felt, you know, when you see a fake newspaper on the screen in a movie and it's just, the layout looks wrong. The fonts are wrong. It, same kind of thing except the tv version like it, it looks like a, a a kind of a poor facsimile of of her not that i watch it but you know a daytime talk show uh, basically but uh, yeah i mean if i can just cut in quickly the thing with the 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 unlikable reluctant lead is that eventually like they usually reach instead of just being cranky or irritable um and it, the the character it's not an ideal match but the character i'm thinking here is roy kent in, in ted lasso is that you know that he does get won over uh by ted lasso's ver vision but if when he comes out he's swearing at everyone he's openly sort of mocking them like that's so so when uh, you know in even the first uh first episode coach says to ted he says He's going to be angry when we win him over. And he goes, oh, he'll be furious. So they sort of know what's coming, but it takes a while to get there. So when this nasty guy sort of, you know, adopts their vision, uh, it's, it feels earned. Like they've, they've sort of battled against him and he's offered that resistance. And you don't have that here. And there's a whole, but yeah, like uh, uh, Buddy and uh, Whiplash as, as the sort of maniacal music teacher. Um uh, the guy who plays J. Jonah Jameson having an old man moment. J.K. Simmons. You know, there, there's a J.K. Simmons. Thanks. There's a whole list of people that are, you know, mean characters and there's a process to breaking them down. So when when you do when the, you do win them or when the main character does win them over, that's an accomplishment. Right. It's earned. Yeah. But I, I didn't get any of that here. And, and it's, you know, I, I, there just wasn't that much resistance. Right. So. Yeah. So ultimately, it was, wasn't that, you know, fulfilling. What about the lead? Um, what about Brooke Shields' character? Uh, Catherine, do you think she had... Because <laughs> you also need <laughs> an incredibly <laughs> sympathetic... Um, she can be, you know... Uh, let, let's, it, it, you know, we are talking, uh, in gendered terms. It is, you know, let, let, you know, yeah. respect the genre, uh, or, or, or it, cause it certainly wasn't trying to upend the genre. <laughs> um, no. she, you know, be feisty can be like all these certain things, but I think somebody is having a meltdown. It usually seems to be the, you know, then the character, that character is the one who's got to go through a character change. Here it's, uh, you know what? I, was she sympathetic enough, or because she wasn't a jerk? They, they decided they weren't going to do that, but it wasn't like you're like, boy, I'm really on this millionaire who can afford to buy a castle, who can afford an incredibly successful millionaire who's yeah gone through a bad divorce. That's you know, and that can be awful. I'm thinking of oh, uh, 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 under the Tuscan sun. You know, like you sympathize with her immediately, even though she's another affluent white woman who can, you know, afford to <laughs> cash in and bugger off to Italy and then just buy a, a villa and <laughs> turn it into an amazing place. Yeah. Um, but which, what, do, what do you think? Uh, did you really sympathize with Bookshield's character, with Sophia Brown? Sophia McGinty. Yeah, I, I think that I did. I didn't buy the. I didn't buy the Drew Barrymore thing. Um, yeah, I'm did not you sure care about her. Like, did you go? Because I think part of it is you really want, even if it, she's kind of a jerk or has to go through something, you do want her to fall in love. Did you want, did any, yeah. any viewer go, boy, I really need her to, to, she's hurting and I need her to, I need that. I need her to have that hole filled. Her heart needs to be mended. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I took the delay weird, as a it's no. It's like a weird, 
it's it was like a weird twist on it's kind of like a Cinderella story, right? Except for she has all the she has all the money and she's gonna rescue him. Um and so but he's just such a jerk. Not a bad thing. No, because yeah. she be, she becomes friends with the townsfolk and it's like, oh, that's how um you know, that's the solution to the problem is a benevolent landowner, right? <laughs> yeah. Like this is how we this Although, is how we deal with this. You could say this just goes back to the Gilded Age when uh American uh Rockefellers in some cases literally were marrying off their daughters and bailing out English nobles for titles. <laughs> oh yeah. Well this is like yeah. that like this is it's such a basic it's such a basic Consuelo story. Vanderbilt. Right? So you have the title, like Downton Abbey, Pride and Prejudice you already mentioned. Yeah. And you have these people and they have titles, so they think they're hot shit, but they've gamb someone's gambled away all the money or what or whatever. They don't have the money, so they need to Oh, that was the other thing I was thinking about. The that old TV show to the manor born, right? <laughs> Yes. Like so much, so, so many stories have been created, have been created out of so this. So many opportunities. Because... Yeah. Yeah. Missed so. opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Like it's almost like the skeleton of a story was here and they just said mm -hmm. it, a script, make the movie. I think somebody in the chat yeah. said, and let, if I can find the comment, oh, sorry guys. <laughs> Good somebody, luck. Somebody. Yeah. I, Somebody referred to this uh, in the chat, um, and I'm sorry I can't give attribution. I haven't worked. I haven't gotten. Listen, I got this chat on the screen, <laughs> uh, but somebody in the chat mentioned uh, the Netflix strategy here is you know do a couple of high end tent poles, and then otherwise you know Christmas just throw some shit on the wall. There will be a market for it, like. Hallmark and Lifetime aren't coming out with a movie a day on Christmas because they think it isn't going to make the money. You know, um, they're doing it because it works, uh, that it can be as schlocky as, you know, this is almost, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's it's something we would have, you know, like straight to, straight to video, the smear of the 80s and 90s, straight to video. Yeah. You know, it, 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 like this is this is it. Except that they got a couple of real actors to lead, and not to say that the sporting actors weren't real actors. Uh, looks like it was shot in um, in in the United Kingdom. They spent some money on local local talent, which yeah. totally delivered. Uh, but <laughs> you guys buying any of that or? Yeah, I mean it. it <laughs> A couple of shots look sort of like Matt, Matt draw, drawings, but uh, yeah, I mean, they, uh, and I was sort of wondering about that. They didn't really have much in the way of detail of exactly where they was. I think I saw the ocean in the, uh, uh, in the background, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I'm not sure the, the plan behind this, this one here. Um, what else did I want to mention? I don't know. Onward. <laughs> well, it's, it, there's not a lot to like, I mean, or in a way it's so bad. It, we, we would, we would almost be better to say, okay, let's talk about the story we would have made. Actually, let me add. Okay. Catherine, we'll go to you. If you were, if you had gotten this, yeah. you got this story. How, what are, what are some key changes you would have made to, to give us a better a better payoff, a better setup, a better payoff. Let's, this is, this is Jim and Rob over analyze movies workshop. Well, there has to be, there has to be something that keeps them apart. Right. Like, so why? Yeah. So. That She's a Campbell. Wasn't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something. I don't know. Well, she's born is, of a peasant. <laughs> One of the help. <laughs> like. Exactly. <laughs> a commoner, a commoner. He can't marry a commoner, but that doesn't work because it's Scotland, right? So yeah. anyway, yeah, so that it needed, they needed that. Well, what and, would be, uh, looking at what you got there, what would you have picked as a way to, you know, 
from the barest of the premise, what would you have used to keep them to uh, that very much that keeping them apart? Oh, he needed to have some trauma, right? And then she, uh, and then he's saved by the love of a good woman. The true love <laughs> triumphs. You know, a classic yeah. to get us yeah, to true yeah, love triumphs. Course. Yeah. What about you, Jim? What uh, what would you have done? You got this. Well, it, it needed a bit of a middle. Like it came in at a site ninety three, I think. But uh, if if you wanted to add fifteen minutes, you could have had something to do with. Uh, I don't know what what the engine would be for that, but uh, something going on in the town other uh, other than just you know people making cupcakes and knitting yeah, and things like that, but. There wasn't really yeah, a there, subplot. No, there wasn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, no B plot, right? Because that's one uh, of the other the great things about the Princess Bride, right? Like you have your mm. you have your you have your main characters, and then yeah. you have these subplots where you also care about those characters as well, and they tie into and help you resolve the main the main plot. Yeah, so, yeah. and usually that's great point. how it's done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, there's no, yeah, I, I, even the one that they possibly could have had, the the one character as trauma, the gay guy, who they literally silence. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a little, yeah. Oh, that's a little on the nose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could have had something to do with, it's kind of typical and maybe a bit boring, but they, and I don't really get this. I guess she's just been divorced in the past year, so it's still pretty fresh. Um, but there's really not. Uh, they they talk about uh, this husband and the and the new um, fiance or whatever the next the next wife for the, the the husband. Yeah, that's not really delved into. Not that I needed to know more, but that could have been something. Uh, Let's look at Ted Lasso yeah. and how they. Regularly, we would get just enough of uh, the owner, her exes, just like, I mean, even at times when she's really mm. being a B-I-T-C-H. We would get a bit of the yeah. former owner where it's yeah. like, and, and, that's and a he, dick. That is, you sympathize with her. If they had mm -hmm. at the moment, at the beginning, uh, her interacting with the ex where he's just passive aggressive we see the new wife the something to get us to go mm -hmm. oh my god she's hurting because we see her hurt because we're only told mm -hmm. it's all talky talky we don't yeah, see yeah, her yeah. pain if we had a scene right at the beginning where the husband is just the ex is just just grinding her uh, just sticking it in her. Then all of a sudden we're like, we're on her side. It's like, oh my goodness, she was wronged. If only the fans understood. Yeah. Heck, <laughs> and what the hell? Why were all the fans in Scotland just love her? It's like, have they not been keeping up? Do they not get the internet there? Do they not have television? <laughs> Do they Have they not read the most recent book? Why are they automatically on her side? That would have been, even as she's, mm -hmm. I thought I could get away from well, I can't get away from me, but maybe they're, oh no, they even hate my choices there. That would have been an obstacle for her. Again, yeah, something yeah. for us no, to I, sympathize with her. Yeah, and it was it was right there, too, to take advantage of. But I, I have a feeling, <laughs> I mean, it was so cut out of it, right? I have a feeling that it was, was not, uh, um, uh, that it's maybe cut. I, I, I don't nope. even, I, I, could it have even been cut? I'm cutting it Like, I think it's, I think we really did see, uh, although it's always hard to tell, like, none of us have the script. So I like to talk about the story, not the screenplay. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's yeah. sometimes when you're watching this and you're kind of going, yeah, this doesn't have any plot holes. There's just, like, it, it actually, you know, it's a, and then this happened, then this, and this, and then. But you don't feel like, oh, we're missing a scene here. We're really just saying, I wish there was a scene here that could have. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think they leaned on. Well, mind you, Carrie uh, Elways and Brooke Shields must have cost them a lot of money. That's probably the majority of the budget would have went right to those two. You know, 
This is the old guard all over again. (laughs) You know? Uh, I I didn't look up the budget on this nonsense. I doubt it. Well, let's find... You know what, though? I do have the... Oh, we've got no... Damn it, I am sur- I'm Googling that shit up. Um, sure, yeah. Catherine, what do you what, what what what's your thinking? Are we Are we talking out of our ass here? Or? No, I mean, what are you gonna say, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, well it is. It's like it's almost like you gotta rewrite the whole goddamn thing. Like Yeah. These are yeah. the times I, so, I kind of do with. Uh... Oh my god! What? I'm looking at bleeding cool Shocking. news. Uh huh. Um, because I searched budget. There's one okay. thing I don't think I can bring it in like I've done before as easily. I'll have to work that out as well. Uh. Oh my goodness, this is like from Jeremy Conrad. 100. This year, A Castle for Christmas is one of the big Christmas offerings from Netflix, an answer to the hallmarks and lifetimes of the world by throwing a huge budget and casting big names in the lead roles. The factory productions these holidays films have become are laughable, yet people lap them up in droves. Oh my goodness, this is... This is hard to get through already. Can you laugh something up in droves? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you can. So when one that? sees Castle, you would be forgiven to think that this is just going to be a cookie cutter holiday romance. I I, I don't see oh. where the... <laughs> I, I, I don't need to be forgiven on this He's one. liking it. <laughs> this is where you would be wrong. I don't think we're wrong, Jeremy. Uh, no. As this sweet and charming film slowly, and I do mean slowly wins you over <laughs> it's like oh my goodness but i you, there's no actual uh there's no number in here um I was, I was just hoping there'd be like a number uh but apparently uh big budget is well hey these are two stars we've heard of uh but yeah i i don't think yeah this is not Sh- shirley's thrown numbers uh you know just no uh, you know, it's not a seventy, eighty million dollar picture with special effects and action sequences. This is a, you know what? This is something that's made in Winnipeg all the time. Five million dollars mm-hmm. if shot quickly. And yeah, even though most uh, most of the money will still go to Brook Shields and uh, Carrie Elways, they are not the names they used to be. Not at all, <laughs> you know. So. I, yeah, they'll take all of what little money's there and then you just, this is a meat grinder. <laughs> this is a meat grinder operation. They certainly didn't yeah. spend it on and the it, development end. Let's really make sure we hone this before we go to camera. <laughs> Mary Lambert did not spend the last year developing it with a team of writers. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Lambert could have been, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll go to, because I think what she's done mostly uh, uh, since is a lot of television, reality, you know, television, mm. making a journeyman director, a journey person director. Um, but yeah, I don't, yeah, like I suspect that just like the rest of them, it's like, well, check cleared, all right, bags are packed, let's go to, let's go to the United <laughs> Kingdom, let's go to whatever studio we shot most of this in. Um you, you know, the other thing, too, is that um, uh, Netflix is notoriously uh, secretive about its sort of dealings and its ratings. And so I, I'm not surprised that we, we can't find a, a budget there. But uh, yeah. um, some of the I, I looked at her. Uh, she did a movie in 2011, Mega Python versus Gatoroid. So, you know, <laughs> this is. <laughs> Wait, what, say that again, Jim. I didn't. One of her one of her uh, movie movies in the last uh, ten years was called Mega Python versus Gatoroid, and it's pretty much what you would think. It, it shows two <laughs> reptiles wrestling, and I guess they're large. I don't know. Uh, Mega. But, uh, so yes, when we're talking uh, about this is uh, yeah. this is uh, Mary Lambert. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
So, you know, this is a, a monster free uh, production. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, maybe that was uh, appealing to her. I, I, I also want to sort of bring now up. Now I want to go into really uh, quickly, what's her name? Oh, sorry. I want to go into the Twitter. Uh, I am what the hell is that woman's name? No, no, Twitter. I want to go into her history and go, oh. gee, I wonder where was, is there a tweet there where she said, we all need to go watch Mega, what the hell was it? Mega Shark? <laughs> Mega Python and Gator. Yeah. Oh, where's that Not tweet? Sharp. Where is that Mega tweet? Python versus Gatoroid. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's you know once you do something like Pet Cemetery one and two, you sort of gain a name for you. You paint yourself in a corner, Rob. Immediately uh, upon embarking on a directorial career. No, but I think she's got you know some <laughs> some skin in the horror game. So that's that's maybe where that comes from. But uh, yeah. I mean, but and, uh, you know, making like again uh, this. All these folks have a right to make a living. You know what? They do oh, what yeah. they do. Like, it's not, uh, you know, it's not to deny them that right or somehow it 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 takes away from previous work they've done. You know, um, you know, making shit, like, I mean, making shit now doesn't mean the, the great stuff you did before or even adequate stuff. Uh, you've done before is yeah. somehow worse by it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't saying that um, to you I, as I, much as I was, I guess, saying it to myself. Yeah. Uh, and just quickly, I wanted to bring up as while we're still talking about story here, God knows what we're going to come up with in meaning, but, <laughs> um, uh, as somebody who does some freelance <laughs> writing occasionally used to be more, but now it's occasional. Um, I the way that writers are portrayed on screen is, is hilarious to me. Of course, I don't have uh, tales of success, but uh, uh, of the kind that uh, Sophie Brown has. But, you know, whether it's uh, whether, it, you know, one of the big ones, you know, is how a, how a, a publisher's company is run. Another Christmas movie, Elf, where they're like forced to write on Christmas Eve. Or Christmas, I can't remember what. It's some nonsense. But it's just like, what, for the big Easter rollout of fiction, <laughs> of children's books? I just, it, it, the, the whole, the portrayal of, of publishing in that movie, just sort of, I know it's it's totally dorky, but it just kills it for me. I'm just like, this is not, and James Caan would never be a publisher. He just, he, you know, maybe a manager of a sports team or something, or a guy who runs an auto body shop. But that, ca <laughs> James Pawn, uh, Caan, <laughs> Playing that character as he does would never be a publisher. Uh, anyway, that's that's just. But yeah, you always see uh, writers at the. You know, they always have this great power, and they're 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 huge, hugely popular. They have these these massive apartments in New York. That's another uh, another little bit of a theme I think is that that Brooke Shields was aspirational in this, but going from new money to old money, right? Even sort of crossing the ocean for it, but. You know, whether it's whether it's that, whether it's uh, I think Robin Masters on Magnum P.I. Wasn't he a writer? Yeah. Help me out here. And so he's got this great he's this guy who's so busy and secretive and powerful that he can't. You know, what does he write? <laughs> <laughs> like how, uh, book like detective books. He's got a he's got a place in, in uh, Oahu that he never visits because he doesn't have time because he's too busy. Anyway. Just the, the depiction of writing and writers and publishing houses uh, in movies just drives me crazy on the regular. Sorry, <laughs> I don't do too many rants, but there, there you go. Good to you. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I just I thought of that while watching this. It's like, how about a, a, a modestly successful writer or somebody who doesn't know if they're going to write another book or somebody who's, you know, chipping away and... A you know, right. just doing it on the yeah. as a side gig. Could we see but, one uh, post it? Maybe several. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on, <laughs> the the multiple notebooks as they're trying to keep yeah. track of all the crazy well, plot think, lines. Yeah, yeah, like Stephen King does it, but because he knows, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. So others know. I well, in even, yeah, no, I'm I'm a go ahead. Even the relationship between, I, I that was another thing I didn't buy, but I, I'm actually going to the other end. Usually agents are like, well, what do you want to do? Hey, you don't want to do that? Okay, well, we'll sell this. They are not, not at that point. That 
kind of writer with that book of business, they're going, I, they'll write another thing and I know I'll be able to sell it. I, they are not, they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll do what the writer wants. They'll be, listen, do you need me to get, if you need me to buy time from the publisher, I'll go buy time from the publisher. Won't be the first time something was late, <laughs> you know, like, you know, yeah. a, somebody, an established writer, you know, is going to have the the relationship with them and their agent is going to be a, well, what do you, do you, do you want to, okay, you want to kill that character off? I get it. Whatever. Hey, if you want to re it, again, the agent may also say, oh, if you want to, if that character didn't really die, I'd be okay with that too. <laughs> yes, we can sell it all. <laughs> but even that part I didn't buy because it's about the only pressure on her. Write this book, the deadline, the yeah. Which again, for an established writer, it's I do the. I mean, it's a lame trope, but do the do the writer's block thing. She barely had writer's block. She was just really like just bored of a character, trying to come mm. up some other bullshit. Well. I think wasn't it twelve books or something like that? Like, yeah, maybe time to come up with something different there. Although uh, now uh, that actually, for a romance author, you know, it's like that's true. That's true yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do at least thirty before you're done. <laughs> Book and, thirteen entitled "Same Old, Same Old." You know, like uh, same old in Antigua. <laughs> Book fourteen, yeah. Spaghetti Monday. You know, like uh, there weren't. <laughs> all right do, guys but, uh, yeah. i think that's i think yeah i think uh, Catherine, do you have anything that you want to add to story before we any other moments of i don't buy that <laughs> you i think we're call, good <laughs> <laughs> you can always call this say i don't buy that <laughs> all yeah. right well then uh folks before we get into the meaning Let's, uh, you know what? First of all, I haven't already, and I don't have the graphic ready yet. That'll be for next show. But uh, first of all, take this opportunity to beg y'all for a, beg for that like. <laughs> if you've enjoyed yourself so far, a like would be nice. Uh, of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And don't forget to, uh, oh yeah, ring that bell. Um <laughs> Jim's just clued. Uh, it was just, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Rob talks. <laughs> uh, okay, where am I going with this? All right. Uh, also, let's, uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the meaning. Has anyone seen, or a quick look at the chat? Has anyone, or have you guys, like, I mean, there's been a couple of, uh, oh my goodness, they're, uh, they're actually talking about, uh, uh, sheep shearing. <laughs> <laughs> They've gotten away from <laughs> like Lord awesome. of the Flies in there. Oh, but but it's also uh, it, it guess Matthew uh, came up with a great uh, uh, great uh, 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 triple mix of metaphors: sheep fleeced and wool pulled over their eyes. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to go through the chat, I think. Um, which I think I can now store in some way. Maybe, maybe, oh, okay. I don't know. It's been scrolling up. Might be able to do that. Um, nothing. Is there anything, uh, I think, you know what? If I scroll up, then it also scrolls up on the screen, but screw it. I think somebody, <laughs> Matthew, Hallmark slash Lifetime equals capitalist consumer commercial cinema crap. Wow, that's a lot of C's. A lot of, a lot of alliteration there. The five C's of Hallmark and Lifetime Christmas nonsense. Oh, I didn't even, could have had six C's. Could have shoved in a, a Christmas in there. Um, Cody Ooh, trolling everyone. I wonder everyone. if there's any good Australian Christmas movies. I don't know of any. Matt, chime in. Actually, you know what? Love to hear what, what we're talking about this nonsense, because I don't think we have anything else on the schedule that's really Christmas. This is our Christmas. Here's our Christmas show, folks. Um, what I uh, would love to hear in the chat, uh, and a quick round table before we get to the meaning and everything else, but in the chat, what's your actual favorite Christmas movie? Do you have one? 
you can say they're all just nonsense, but love to hear that. And Matthew, if you wouldn't mind adding, you know, like a, hey, a stellar Australian Christmas uh, movie that we should see. Uh, Ahmed, <laughs> um, I don't see any, uh, I don't see anything coming out of the Middle East on this uh, uh, genre, but you know what? You never know. <laughs> um, you never know. You never know. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we'd love to, love to see that. Um and uh, Jim, favorite Christmas movie? If you uh, got one. Christmas Carol with uh, Christmas Carol with Alistair Sim, hands down, number one. We watch it almost every easy year. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, and I think looks, that came up. Looks great. It's probably been remastered. Looks great. Sounds yeah. great. There's jokes. We make references to it all year. And I actually looked up something that was uh, what was troubling me about it. Not troubling me about it, but. Uh, when, when the kid talks back to him in the alley, he goes, you know, Oh dear boy, dear boy, uh, give me that goose or whatever. Uh, he, he actually, he actually calls back to him. He says, not what fur or what core, but I looked up it's walker, which used to be an old English term for lying apparently. So, uh, W A L K E R. We've got well, some great go. ones already in the chat, but uh, next we're going to uh, uh, already coming up in the chat. But uh, next, though, Catherine, do you have a favorite Christmas movie? Oh, Red Rider BB Gun, of course. Oh, A Christmas Story. A Christmas, Christmas story. story. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Godfather. I mean, obviously. <laughs> but of course. <laughs> One and two only. <laughs> um. I, you know, for myself, uh, I, I, you know what, I, I would say of 10 years ago, it would have been a Christmas story. Uh, now I'm kind of, I, I, I can't say I have a favorite. I guess I got to kind of plant it back on there. Although Elf, you know, it's, you know, it's got charm. Like it, it, what's yeah. interesting when we're talking yeah. about a lot of these yeah. things, they are, they're all ridiculous. Um, and uh, you brought up Love Actually, uh, Catherine, which, uh, yeah, it problematic. <laughs> um, and you know what? It, it, I, I, I can't say it's cookie cutter, but you're kind of going, wow, they're like, we know how to press these buttons. We're very good at it. And we're going to we're going to manufacture a movie for that. But the, uh, the one thing I think that makes these, the, the, the movie we're talking about now and a lot of other schlock like it and love actually different is it's like, wow, they, it is unfortunate it was spent on that movie, but they, they spent the time they spent, like there was talent at every level, at development, at direction, at, you know, the acting, they brought all the, all the best that film can be to making this shameless, <laughs> shameless, uh, uh, heart, you know, uh, uh, emotional heart. Pre Do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm not articulating this well. Um, does that make sense to you, Catherine? Do you know what I, I'm, I mean? Like, love actually would be something we'd just laugh about. Nah, what a bit, what a piece of crap! But it was made too well. Yeah, but these people and lots of people really like it. Yeah, well, because I think the the creators, the filmmakers, really know what they're doing. You know, they're like that. That just. A studio can generate yeah. something. I was watching Shang-Chi the other day, and it's like, wow, this is Hollywood at its craft best. Like, throughout the whole chain, it is well-acted, well-crafted. Uh, you know what? The story is super, like, stupid solid. It's, it's uh, uh, but at no time am I going to go, this is truly one of, uh, you know, Ms. Jenkins and her film greatness. It's not film greatness. Love actually isn't film greatness. You're seeing uh, the best manufacturing that can come out of Hollywood. And I think the part of the problem with this film, it's the lowest manufacturing. You know, it's like really kind of nobody cares. 
Nobody cares to quality. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, so we've got, I think we've got all three of our favorites. Let's uh, dig into the chat for, uh, we have, yeah. okay. All right. This is, um, notwithstanding, we'll come back to Matt's comments, but Katie Fowler rolling in with Die Hard as a Christmas movie. And we've already had that conversation. We have established it canonically as a Christmas flick. Brooke, no arguments. Catherine, do you, what do you, what do you think? Do you think uh, Die Hard's Christmas flick? Oh yeah. I would go with Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ahmed is uh, coming in with Nightmare Before Christmas. Nice. You know, um, okay, uh, Matt. Uh, oh, Matt says he doesn't know of an Australian Christmas film, but he knows an Australian Christmas song. Uh, jingle bells, jingle balls, jingle all the way. Christmas in Australia on a scorching summer's day. Hey! <laughs> Good one. Jingle bells, jingle bells, Christmas time is butte. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a rusty Holden ute. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Well, thank you. Oh, there's another one. We're going to get, I'm going to get the last verse here. Jingle bells, jingle bells, Christmas time is here. Oh, what fun it is to have a Barbie and a beer. <laughs> it's very, 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 very stereotypically Australian. Thank you very much, Matt, for that. Uh, oh, Jelly Duck mentions, and I am now reminded of my favorite. Jelly Duck mentions the Jim Carrey live action, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. But I actually own the original animated one hour with Boris Karloff, the How the yeah. Grinch Stole Christmas. I can't believe I have to, mm -hmm. I had to be reminded of that. Thank you very much, Jelly Duck. He's talking about the live action one. I got to say, yeah, of all the films I could say, that, that original pretty solid Dr. Seuss uh, adaptation is my, my favorite. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Boris Karloff, who got his start acting in Canada, in Western Canada. So including uh, uh, Regina and when well, the old Pantages well, system, Dakota. right? Like yeah, vaudeville yeah, yeah. and repertory company in the, uh, there's a, what they call the great cyclone of, uh, uh, the great Regina cyclone. He was part of the group that helped clean up after the town got hit by a tornado, not a cyclone, but anyway, yeah, I, I wrote an article on, on him about it for the beaver. And I got a letter from his daughter. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> That's oh, good. That is. Okay, a complimentary we letter, I should say. Oh, like, oh, yeah. We're going to curse you. Go ahead. Life. No, it was, a, it was a complimentary. Okay, Catherine, before we wrap up. <laughs> That's good. Although there's a oh, couple before more. Before we wrap up Christmas movies, yeah. I shout out to The Family Man. That's on uh, Netflix now. You're right. Uh, yeah. With so one really, of the best a endings. really nice. <laughs> what, what is that one? The Family Man. The the Family Man yeah, with Nicolas Cage, oh, Tia okay. Leone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen it. And well, I've, it's just come to Netflix. Yeah, I'll put it on my list. You're right, Catherine. That is another and a great ending, like just a yeah. an ending that yeah. And yeah, some that's... just some like just perfect moments right yeah yeah no you're you're absolutely right a movie that doesn't get the credit it uh it deserves yeah, yeah. i think so uh okay uh I, matt is making in the chat an argument that the terminator is a christmas movie and uh makes a bunch of and i i guess i don't think he's arguing it's a christian allegory but there's christian <laughs> themes uh perhaps uh or storytelling trope tropes from the new testament i'm not 100 percent sure on this uh i think i want to argue with them but we do we only have 20 minutes left in the show and uh i think there's still there's still stuff to go but we've got um we may have to come back to that. Uh, oh, Katie Fowler does. And maybe this is the way we can wrap up on this. Uh, I also like Disney's A Christmas Carol, the Mickey Mouse version, which I feel terrible I don't remember. 
<laughs> I'm an old man. And, and is Mickey? Is Mickey's? No, who, I guess he wouldn't be Scrooge. Ah, I lost my sister in childbirth. You know, I can't. I can't imagine <laughs> that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh fan <laughs> would, would any play fan I don't know that'd be weird okay on that note let us get into let's get into the meaning uh, Catherine why don't you start us off what the heck did this movie mean what's, the meaning. what's its message what, was... what do you think its theme its, <laughs> it's, I don't know. its world I do view wanna... is I, I do want to um, give it some credit for not, when I think of Love Actually in some movies that show, that just show ridiculous um, sexual harassment as romantic or stalking as romantic in a way to bring people together and really, you know, disgusting things like that. It didn't really have that. It was, you know, it was like you said, it was, they were appropriate and they had, you know. <laughs> Two anyway. age appropriate adults got together. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That had issues that had issues, but they got together and one wasn't the other one's boss and one didn't, um, one didn't come and do goofy flashcards to, the woman that married his friend, like what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, yeah. So we're uh, yeah, because I was thinking about because when I was thinking about the movie, I was like, okay, why was this so terrible? And what are good romantic comedies? And what's the difference, right? So I'm thinking, okay, so Sleepless in Seattle is a good one, and but then after that, they made oh, what was it called? That after Sleepless in Seattle, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan made another movie. Oh, You've Got Mail, which was... You've Got Mail. He basically stalks her and she's like, oh, I'm so glad that it's you. It's like, no, this is... Oh, it was just so gross and disgusting. There's nothing good here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so So, glad it's you. I can tell the police. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't have to worry about who am I worried about following me anymore. Because before I it could know. have been any man. Now I know which man. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So at least, you know, like, yeah, criminal acts aren't shown as romantic things to aspire to <laughs> within relationships. I give it that. And that's not nothing. Well, it, yeah. again, I go back to the, the very beginning where I said the one good thing I can say, and I really meant it, a couple of age-appropriate adults, mm-hmm. you know. And you're absolutely right, Catherine. Uh, uh, no, I mean, there's, they both want something out of the other, but you never feel like there's a power play. Like it's never presented that way. Yeah. You know, yeah, at most he's a bit of a dick and kind of petty, but, you know, (laughs) you didn't feel like she was trapped in the castle. It's not (laughs) Beauty and the Beast. (laughs) It's the, oh, I'll call the cab. (laughs) You know, it's like, (laughs) heck, my girlfriends will come pick me up in the microbus. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Uh, Matt says, uh, commenting on that. Oh, Ahmed's got to go. Uh, Jelly Duck, good to see you. Great to see you, man. Thanks for thanks for popping in. Um, yeah. Happy Monday. Yeah. Uh, so we've got, what was the other one? It wasn't with Tom Hanks, but Meg Ryan was in it, where they both, because their exes had got together, and Meg Ryan, and I want to say Matthew Broderick, set up like a spy post watching them. Oh. And it's kind of nasty. That sounds it's, it's like it had familiar. a Yeah, it had a dark but it what it wasn't dark dark. Like it didn't kind of go, okay, this is all awful and this is why they have the miserable end they do. It had kind of a they still wanted love or something. 
Where the heck is that? Are we all looking it up at the same time? I think we are. <laughs> Addicted to love? That, I believe, is it. Oh, my goodness. With the late Kelly Preston. Yes. Yeah. Directed by Griffin Dune. Dune Dunn. <clears throat> it's 1997. Yeah, Matthew Three Broderick. Call. Yeah, mm. Matthew Broderick. The weirdest what the hell. Um, yes, here's from the synopsis, the plot synopsis. Mutually hostile at first, Sam and Maggie eventually warm up to each other in their quest to break up Linda and Anton, their exes, who are now together with each other, complicating their original mission to win their former partners back. That sucked up. <laughs> it's just nothing... That's just not right. Um, yeah. Uh, but not very, nothing related to Christmas. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Back to, back to, back to the show we're actually doing uh, as we, <laughs> as we continue to lose viewers. Um, <laughs> okay. The meaning. Um, I'll, I'll start if that's okay with you guys. I think. Yeah. Probably my biggest problem with this one is. And it's, it's not to take away from Jane Austen's accomplishments as a member of the gentry uh, of a time, you know, when, you know, it, women members of the gentry were very circumscribed in what they could do. And only a few broke out of that, you know, social, those social expectations, those social barriers. Um we have this disturbing, uh, especially in North America, I would even say worse in the States than it is in Canada, but this, this fetishizing of royalty and this, this, uh, this idea of, you know, becoming the Duchess, be, you know, winning the love of a noble. Like this is, oh, sure, it's love, but I, I get noble love. And I suddenly I'm elevated by it. Um, and there's, you know, and well, at the same time, trying to have it's a bit of have your cake and eat it too, where it's just, no, I'm proud of my commoner roots, but oh, I'd really love to, but I still want to eat upstairs, <laughs> you know, like uh -huh. no one actually sort of, you know, and not that because this film is so light. It's so lightweight. It's almost, there's just, there's so little substance to this film. It doesn't commit to it because it commits to almost nothing. Um, but there's still that kind of, uh, that there's that thing going on here. Um, further, even in the, pa the patronizing, this idea of all we need is just a better landlord. Some slave owners were good. Uh, you know, my, my manorial lord doesn't grind me. That's not like, I mean, Jesus Christ, if he was legit. And it's interesting, not even out of the Gilded Age, but even in the, the, the 30s and 40s, there were some American business owners who got disturbingly rich and then ended up giving their business to their employees. And I'm not talking to just management, the, the shop workers that somebody's like, okay, they're really, uh, they committed, <laughs> they put their money where their mouth is like, where is, you know, so this, this very idea, this, uh, that's not even questioned is it's like, well, of course someone else has to own where the, 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 the ability for any of these people to make their living. Somebody has to own it. We just need a mm. nice owner. And that is so disturbing. So, and I think that's what, uh, Katie early in the chat, uh, said, can it get a minus one? Let's say minus a hundred. Like it's, this is fucked up, you know? Um, mm. so I think that you've got this weird fetish for royalty and this idea, this, um, I think uh, I think it's called hypergamy, that idea of marrying up in class. Um, and, you know, even that's disturbingly sexist. The woman's ob as nonsensical 
as it probably is. Unless, who knows, maybe all her films were optioned or all her scripts were, all her uh, manuscripts were optioned. She had a really good business manager. Who knows? She, she could be as rich as she, we get that impression. Or, <clears throat> and heck, we don't know. She might have been born to money. Most successful people, you know, came from a class that allowed to, you know, it's the rich, the, the riches to more riches story. <laughs> Um, yeah. but, um, where, like, where is, you know, this idea that, ah, that it, what she wants is not a man who will love her and support her or, you know, be a partner to her. It, it makes it better that it's noble man who loves and supports her. So it's, it's just, I think that, uh, that it's not, I, I can't say it's, a message of the movie, the message is cooked into the trope. You know, the, the premise, which is a big one, you know, um, I'm, you know, again, Netflix, they have all those princess Christmas things, princess switch, like, you know, it, it like it's where, uh, Vanessa Hudgens is like, she, she keeps playing herself in different guises. Now she's, you know, now there's three of them in the most recent one. Um, uh, but this idea, this fascination with nobility, fascination with royalty, and it's like, this is not, this is fucked up. But I think that's, that's a big chunk of the meaning of this film is just cooked into its premise. I'm not saying that Mary Lambert believes it. I don't think any of them, if you ask them real questions, there's this, oh, a kind of a romantic idea. You know, have you thought about how that played out? One of the most egregious, a much better film and a better made film was that one, again, another Meg Ryan one about Leopold. What's her name? Leopold, well, what the hell? Caden Leopold. Caden Leopold. Which yeah. is like, oh, I will get to go back in time with this man to this better time for what? No, you, you are independent. You, you, it's never getting better. I'm not saying it's good for women yeah. now, but oh, fuck. Rewinding the clock isn't necessarily the way to go, especially to the 19th century. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> when women's need for sexual release was literally referred to as hysteria. Although, mind you, I suspect but a lot of women. Outlander, come on. <laughs> like, I mean, I, it, now, mind you, at the same time, it also gave a, a, a great moment for women's independence in that there's like, hey, we could have a machine and then I can have this release without an idiot around, <laughs> an idiot who get me pregnant around, you know, so. A little bit of good with a lot of bad. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's that would be that's a that is the meaning of the film, the main philosophical point i don't think it's saying anything about relationships really because there's just it doesn't say much of anything there's just so little substance here mm. uh, other than the unintended i suspect unintended consequences of oh look two human beings age appropriate that is a it's a message whether it was intended or not Two, two age appropriate people could have a relationship. It doesn't have to be some weird, you know, what the hell. <laughs> and that's a, a good, let's say, message, intended or not. I mean, it was a choice of the filmmakers, yeah. you know, to, to cast those two. So uh, if I'm crapping them on them uh, on one end, I, I guess I have to praise them on the other. What do you, uh, what do you think, Catherine? No, I think you're, yeah, I agree. I agree. Anything else you, anything else you see going on here? I'm thinking about what you're talking about with comparing it to some other Christmas movies. Or should I really just I put know. a time code here? Let's go back to Catherine's yeah. rant about love, actually. Here. <laughs> Watch that again. Well, I was thinking about, like, what's the... I was thinking about, okay, Christmas movies. I actually saw, not last year, but would have been the year before, before COVID. Um, 
last Christmas. No. Yeah, with the guy, you know, the guy from Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, that. Yeah, he's got a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, um, yeah oh, it was terrible. Was, it, like that was a. I don't. Did I Amelia even? Oh, Clark. I did finish it. Uh, Amelia Clark and what the heck was yeah. that guy's name? Is it Harry Henry actor. Golding or something? Uh, like yes. That? Yes. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That was also a terrible movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it was. So, yeah. And I paid theater money for that. Oh. Oh. Poor Catherine. <laughs> Back in the day. Uh, oh. <laughs> Back when you went they, to theaters on a regular basis. All right. Mm. Uh, Jim. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you think on this? Before I forget, I, I wanted to mention a, a good, uh, is it Christmas? Yeah, it's Christmas. Uh, Christmassy movie, uh, about romance is just friends with, uh, Ryan Reynolds and, uh, Amy Smart. I want to say it filmed a bunch of years ago oh, uh, I remember in, that. in Moose Jaw. It's hilarious. Give it another look. We watch it all the time in this house. Well, not all of them. And but Anna once Ferris. a year, it usually. And Ferris is in it yeah. as well. It's sort of a Britney, although it's not cool to dump on Britney anymore, but somebody who's sort of not going through a, a pop star, not going through a <laughs> very good time. you that wistfully? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the time we used to be able to pick on poor young ladies yeah. that have been ex exploited for their money. But uh, um, so that, that's just the first one that comes to mind but uh, yeah it's it's totally funny and uh and it's a good uh, it's a good uh romantic movie where things seem earned by the end i think um but yeah another aspect of this movie is just that i mean i don't know if we've talked so much about the christmas aspect of it but it's hmm. it's christmas and it's just it's just the i it's just the christmas the superficial side i guess um, you know, another missed opportunity in this. I'm sure there's Scottish Christmas carols that we may not, might not know about. Uh, and when they there's one singing scene where they all start, you know, they're literally decking the halls and, and they all start singing. And it's it's uh, Jingle Bells, which is, uh, you know, could you have you're, you're in a small Scottish village. There has got to be some some better music choices that you could have made. But um other than that, it, it it has Christmas in the title. It's technically about Christmas, but there's really no sort of nothing really about it. I mean, it's just all the, it's it's like magical thinking about Christmas, which is a, what a lot uh, ha, ha, a lot of a lot of the ways that we deal with Christmas is this magical thinking that you that it's a, a series of checks like hot chocolate check, comfy sweater check, Christmas lights check. Uh, with the the castle so all the decked trappings, out, I was thinking none of the substance. all the trappings. It, even the last, even the last scene where the daughter comes in, you know, the morning after she's you know been surprised, uh, airlifted over to Scotland by uh, the Carrie Elway's uh, Miles character, um, who's allegedly in, broke but can afford a last minute, <laughs> yeah, last minute, last minute in December. Christmas but you know, she comes ticket. in with. She, she comes in with two big glasses of, of hot chocolate. It's just like check after check after check after check. I'm, I'm really surprised the dog wasn't wearing a hat by the end. But uh, And um, antlers. It's, yeah. And you just everything else has been so uh, demographically engineered. It, it's, it's worse than the Shania Twain song. Like it just like all these sort of check marks that they go through. And it's, it is this sort of depressing, magical thinking about Christmas. You know, a lot of people aren't religious out there. They don't want, you know, not that you have to, yeah, just it maybe should be a bit deeper, you know, uh, rather than just, just all the, the trappings of it, you know, without any of the real meaning. And, uh, yeah, as I said, I was disappointed with the, the, the song choices too. So, I mean, it's got Christmas in the title, but it, you know, just in a very sort of more shallow sense. You know what? Uh, that's a great point. And this is more, 
I, I forgot to mention in craft, but you reminded me of it. And Catherine, I, I thought of you, and and I don't was it was old King Wenceslas, or it was there was one of you hear a carol being sung like it's uh, it's exegetic, it's not diegetic, uh, and it was just the most milk toasty budget. Like an and lame kind of uh, arrangement, one singer doing like a 70s, a late 70s rendition of w- w- a, a carol I I loved and would have been great from a chorus like or from a from a choir. Uh, does this was it like I mean, I just can't remember what the hell it was. I, mm-hmm. Old King Wenceslas or. I think somebody did sing that. Uh, well, I heard it. I, I yeah. think I remember hearing it during the movie. Yeah, and it was like, can yeah. you not give us a... <laughs> heck, Love Actually <laughs> had a great moment. Yeah. You I, know. I don't remember that. I just remember being very underwhelmed by the soundtrack in general, right? Because there were so many, so many parts where... Like the music could have really helped and there was nothing there. Yeah. It was just so... Especially since you're regional, I think Rob brought up Cold Mountain the other day, and uh, one of the, the highlights for me for Cold Mountain, which is a movie I thought was overwhelmed by the villains in it, uh, but the the uh, the uh, highlight of that for me was the, the West Virginia or wherever they were, uh, the uh, choir, the sort of low singing or whatever, the, yeah. the sort of, I don't it has a really... Like something you might see um, at the Folk Fest. Like it was a really cool choir. I'm not sure what the technical word is for that kind of singing, but it was it was notable. And I, all these years later, I still remember it. I mean, you're not going to get that out of this movie necessarily, no, but they're not going to have that budget effort but... into it. Yeah. I mean, this is like a Cruella, <clears throat> Cruella level movie of of sort of unimaginative song uh, soundtrack, uh, which uh, which is another one that I thought was really a letdown. Yeah, where they just ah, kind of um, seventies. Well, the they're indoors. Why not car wash? Yeah, to five bloods when they would just ah, well, favorite son. That's a Vietnam War song that will get us head there, and it's like the laziest, the laziest. Oh well, and maybe that's part of the meaning of this film. It's kind of lazy. It's like well, you know, we don't. It makes you appreciate other films. I don't. (laughs) <laughs> could we is this reasonable to say that uh what well, might uh, is something i think uh somebody said in the chat maybe it was matt about uh or or no was it matt was that ding dong working for uh jeremy conrad it's talking about how we'll lap it up in droves Oh, yes. <laughs> sure. The external uh, source that we quoted, nobody in the chat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll lap it up in droves. Is it almost like a, a how, like the lazy way of saying, it really doesn't matter. You chumps are going to watch it. Mm. And then us chumps yeah. watching it because uh, some woman on the internet going, you have to watch it. <laughs> I am. I'm going to say, well, we watched this. So I'm looking forward to your review of Megaconda or what, what was it? Mega Python and Mega Python and oh, something oid. Gatoroid. 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 I am Gatorade, looking yes, forward yeah. to that review because we watched this yeah. shit. Uh, but available on Prime Video. <laughs> <laughs> everything's available when he's like what is this streaming prime video yeah but you gotta pay for it anyway. uh, uh what are their other channels within the system <laughs> so, yeah. um shutter or something yeah yeah all right uh any we got anything to add on meaning i just don't think there's enough meat on these bones and we're all already over time you. all right yes well you know what i think it is uh time then jim uh, mm-hmm. let's talk about, okay. Uh, oh, actually let's, uh, I know well, there's a couple of things I'm missing in my whole system here, but, um, sure. first of all, let's, uh, let's talk about what, what's the movie, Jim, uh, 
we're going to be watching uh, next. Here, give me a minute here. <laughs> now I've got a sure. I got a next big drawing, and I'm, I got to learn to juggle. So da, 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 da. yes, you do, Jim. Right. Do some oh, yeah. fire fire eating or something like <laughs> my my small study filled with paper. I don't think that may oh, be a goodness. very good idea. I got to muff that. Just a sec, guys. Bear with me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm going to break out some Monty Python. Proust in his first book wrote about, wrote about Proust. Fa la la la. He wrote about, he wrote about. All right. No. Jim. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Gather's so, just smiling. Yes. When are we out of here? <laughs> exactly. It's late in Ottawa. <laughs> It's late in so, our nation's capital. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's right yeah. too. Yikes. Um, Sorry, Catherine. Okay, Jim. What are we? What are we watching next week? We are watching the Benedict Cumberbatch new movie, uh, "The Electrical Life of Lewis Wayne." Any also starring Claire Foy. Also on Prime. <laughs> Also, <laughs> everything's on Prime. <laughs> That's right, folks. Uh, this is on Prime. We'll be back here next week, even a little slicker, hopefully, a little more polished in our presentation. Uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, the watching the electrical life of Lewis Wayne at nine thirty p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, coordinated to Universal Time minus six. Um, all right, uh, but back to this. Let's get back to uh, let's get back to this movie. What are we watching again? All right, this nonsense. This like somebody had a tartan shotgun. Just blam, blam. Ooh, tartan shotgun. I'd watch that. <laughs> I don't think you get that Simpsons when we're went oh, yeah. gun crazy. Makeup and, uh, gun. Oh my God, this is disturbing. All right. Um, first of all, uh, let's, uh, Catherine, are we giving Mary Lambert a pass or a fail? Oh, fail. Jim? No. Yeah, fail. <laughs> Catherine, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no. Uh, and yeah, I got to agree. Um, uh, yeah. Well, well, it's, it's, no. <laughs> All right. Um, that out of the way. Uh, final thoughts, uh, Jim. Why don't you start yeah, us you know, final the, thoughts on this. It, it's not a lot of times we have this sort of um, what, what's the phrase that I use is this confirmation bias that it's like, hey, that movie like looks good. Let's watch that. And surprise, I liked it. You know, we we tend to do that a lot. And I got a little self conscious about it this year. Is it just like, yeah, everything's thumbs up. But, uh, you know, it's it's good for us to uh, maybe watch a movie that, uh, that you know, uh, a lot of critics watch everything, right? So they're going to have movies that they don't like and that they like. And so it's not a bad exercise to watch something that you, that you don't uh, really dig too much. Um, but uh, having said that, there's tons of Christmas movies out there. Uh, maybe people put these things on and they, they do it while they're baking or, you know, decorating cookies or something. I think that's kind of the idea, but, uh, um, yeah, there's tons they're, they're out, you know, and they just keep making more every year. But, uh, uh, I think it's, it's kind of fun. People talk about it a lot to find the most obscure Christmas movie they can. Maybe it's a, that's a good exercise for all of us anyway. All right. Uh, Catherine. Yeah. That's funny. Cause you say people put it on while they're baking and so I used to always watch, I would have Hallmark movies running in the background while I did bookkeeping. Mm. <laughs> and uh, despite that, because the bookkeeping is kind of mindless, so you want something, but not something too exciting that you can, that you can watch. That would actually but grab your attention. That, I know, but despite, that doesn't mean it has to be bad. It should still have a plot. You should actually care about the characters and it sh it shouldn't be ridiculous, and so, yeah, too disappointing. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't say anything more than I already have, and that you guys have uh, uh, wrapped up already. I I all you can make well, a, other a other book. than, ma'am. 
citizen, comrade, we watched this piece of crap because you told us we had to. <laughs> you have agency. <laughs> You, you know, like or you're not a you're not a peasant. You can uh, you can decide. Yeah, I, 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 I'm still choices. putting it on her. Yeah, I'm, I'm I accept no responsibility for this. I was I was uh, because of her and the best chat on the internet, um, uh, basically shaming us into this. Uh, here we are. Um, uh, You'll have to watch it now. Smart remarks aside, you know what I I. I I am I am glad we watched this movie, guys. Um, you know what? Not just go on. Well, not just for the reason. Um, although, yeah. Oh God, this does not hold up. Two days. It's still kind of offensive. Uh, not as offensive as it could have been. Uh, you know, see love actually, uh, but. Um, you know, it's still kind of like, really? There's some eye pokers in here. Um, that said, uh, you know what? Uh, Jim and I have talked about this before. One of the benefits we have as opposed to a lot of our, uh, let's say, our colleagues like DMG, uh, Cody, etc. Folks who, who, you know, putting out content, trying to cover more movies is... The, they don't get to be as choosy as Jim and I do. Uh, we get to kind of, uh, you know, like, I mean, certainly the summer it's like, well, you know, how can we not do Dune? Uh, how could we, you know, but we, we do get to pick and choose and kind of go, I think we'll enjoy that. Uh, so watching this, a thing, there's no other way I would have ever said, oh, Jim, we got to put this on the <laughs> schedule. I think is good for us, good for the show. Um it's also good because some some ways a bad movie kind of gets uh, our heads thinking about how could we have made it better? Because you know what? Human beings do this. Yes, they're incredibly talented people, hardworking people who make films. I'm not trying to take away from their skills and their talents, but it's still something mm-hmm. a human being does. And we, the three of us, our chatters, the folks who will watch this in review later or in a, in a rerun later. It's a human beings thing. It's, it's not something that is only for the, the rarefied few or academe to analyze and break down or even go, you know, it could have been better if, and so, uh, yeah, that's, that's an incredibly patronizing and, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I am glad we watched this movie. You know what? Sometimes you need to see some shit. The next good movie I watch will be, wow, this is just so much better than that piece of crap we watched. Yeah, good point. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, On that note, everybody, uh, again, next movie, uh, we are uh, back to The Electrical Life of Lewis Wayne. It's already playing on Prime Video, so you can go check that out now. Uh, Once again, thank you all very, very much for uh coming out uh we've got well of course we've got matt um uh matt uh from uh from perth uh our man down under um uh, katie fowler uh two uh, one third of the belmoral street research irregulars of course her partner richard l uh the uh, another third of the belmoral street research irregulars jelly duck uh, Ahmed, great, great seeing you. Uh, Cody from the Brock upside, DMG, of course. And again, uh, his links in the chat and I will pin it in the comment after this. Um, who else, who am I missing there guys? Uh, some Jimbo guy. Uh, you mentioned. Say that again, uh, Jim, you cut out them. there for yeah. a second. I think he got most of them. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think I did. DMG. I think there were a few lurkers. But, and yeah, uh, we did have a few lurkers. And thank you very much fine. for lurking. All goes to watch time <laughs> as we creep Thanks, closer Brooke. and closer to monetization. Because you know Brooke what? Shields. We're all, <laughs> we're all, we all serve capital. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, folks, I'll see you guys in the green room. But to everyone else, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, 